What's up guys, Trevor Hunter here with Dirt Bike Test. And today we just concluded kind of our part two of our 450 shootout. And what we did is we took all four of these bikes from stock where we did our, our 450 off-road shootout. And we kind of modified all these bikes and uh, kind of made more like the most common um, modifications and changes people make. We got suspension, made some triple clamps, exhaust, mapping, uh, steering stabilizers, kind of more of the basic stuff. Nothing too crazy, nothing too expensive, um, but we just wanted to see how these bikes were affected uh, when they weren't ridden stock, because most people don't ride these bikes stock. So, um, kind of to start off my ranking, I put the Yamaha first. Uh, I, probably over all these bikes, I have the most time on the Yamaha over the last couple years. But I'd say over the last year or so, I put the most time in on the Kawasaki. And I actually felt really comfortable in that and had high hopes for that. But to me, the Yamaha was really tough to beat. Uh, it was just so solid of a bike from the motor to the suspension to the chassis. Just everything felt kind of at home. And I've kind of always been a Yamaha guy for the most part. And this generation Yamaha 450FX has really suited me well. So I'll kind of start with the motor. Um, the motor we left pretty much stock. We just did a mapping change and a gearing change. And that really just smoothed out the motor, made it a little more broad and rideable and just easier to ride, which for me really works well. Um, I can still lug it and ride taller gears, and I can kind of rev it if I want, but for the most part, I like that lower RPM engine character, and this Yamaha works really good uh, when ridden that way. Suspension, the KYB suspension with TCS, the valving and everything we've done, uh, works really, really good from the motocross track to off-road, single track to desert. I've ridden it all, and with minimal to no clicker changes, it's just really tough to beat. Um, and then kind of moving into the chassis as well. The chassis is just so comforting, especially being a younger pro like myself. I'm always racing and riding at the worst parts of the day. Um, it's the end of the day, the track's the roughest. It's beat up and we're trying to go as fast as we can. So having a really comforting chassis is, means a lot to me. And I'd say this Yamaha in particular has the best chassis feel, uh, which went a long way in how I rank these bikes. Moving on to the second bike in my ranking, I put the Kawasaki. Again, this is a, probably the bike I have the second most time on, and probably the most in the last year. Um, I really, kind of like the Yamaha, I really like it. It just has an overall package. It does everything really well. The motor is phenomenal. Um, it's a little, it needs to be ridden a little more aggressive than the Yamaha, which, good and bad, uh, it kind of, it can wear me out a little bit quicker, but it's also more exciting and more fun to, uh, to ride that Kawasaki motor versus like the Yamaha motor. So kind of the two polar opposites in one way, but both get kind of the same end result. And they're both really fun, good motors to ride. And the, the Kawi motor, I really gel with, especially on like more GP um, style terrain. If I get in the tight single track, the kind of rocky creeks, uh, the tight single track, the mountain, mountain trees and stuff like that, it gets a little harder to ride, especially being it's very much a motocross bike with the very basic modifications, at least come from stock, from Kawasaki. And so some of the changes we made, like the ECU tuning uh, and the exhaust, kind of smoothened out that, that initial hit in the Kawasaki and made it a little easier to ride down low and then kind of broadened the power so it, it runs better up top. And like I said, it really likes to be ridden aggressively and uh, just really fun motor to ride overall. Uh, suspension on the Kawasaki. It's definitely the stiffest suspension we had uh, across the four bikes. And it's one I actually really liked. Um, kind of we've done some triple clamp stuff uh, to kind of change the chassis feel and kind of suspension feel. Um, and doing that made a big difference, but just going to the, the Todd's valving on the suspension really brought it back, brought it up to speed. Um, stock is very soft, very mushy, just kind of hard to ride fast in a GP setting. But we, uh, we got it working really well. Probably, like I said, the stiffest setup and it works the best on the, like, the motocross track, but even when you get in the off-road setting, it still kind of transfers over well, um, more, more of a GP style track. Uh, chassis feel, kind of like the Yamaha, it's very comforting. Uh, maybe not quite to the Yamaha level, but for sure I'd say the second most comforting chassis. And like I said, that goes a long way with me. So it's more of a, it's very easy to ride from motocross to GP and that kind of stuff. Uh, it turns well, it's st very stable. Uh, really just doesn't have many faults in my eyes. So uh, it's one I get along with well. And uh, yeah, ranked second for me. And third on my list is actually the KTM 450 XCF. 
Uh, I'm not the biggest KTM kind of Austrian bike fan. I kind of struggle with how they feel and how they're set up a lot of the times, but this, uh, this KTM we had was actually really working really well. Uh, start with the motor, and the motor is super easy to ride. Uh, just how it's set up with the exhaust and the, the recluse clutch and just overall, it's almost hard, you almost can't get out of control. It's just very smooth, very broad power. Um, you can ride super tall gears with that recluse and you're not gonna saw it. It just kinda, the motor just pulls it and uh, yeah, it doesn't rev out super well, but I don't really rev the bike much, especially on the 450. So that engine character really suited me and uh, it was actually pretty fun to ride, especially in the more off-road technical terrain. The suspension on the KTM, I really like the KYB fork. I kind of get a little bit of Yamaha vibes from that fork. Um, a little more supple feel. Um, it just, I really like that KYB feel in general. So putting that on this KTM really, uh, really helped it out for me. And uh, we got a really good overall suspension setting. Uh, I'd say it's definitely on the stiffer side, uh, even for me. And uh, But I kind of tend to go stiffer than softer. And so I think that kind of played a part in this KTM ranking so well as well. Uh, one kind of negative I found with the KTM is just the chassis feel. It's super rigid, especially around the front of the bike. Uh, you feel just a lot of the ground underneath you, what you're hitting, especially like square edges and bumps and that kind of stuff. So it kind of it took away a lot of the comfort that I really like from the 450. But overall, it was a very solid platform. Uh, I felt like I could ride it, jump on it and ride it and feel very comfortable right away, which is typical of an Austrian bike for me. Usually it takes me a little bit longer to adapt, but uh, this overall package really like, I really didn't like the, the Austrian bike in stock form, but doing all these modifications really brought it back up to life for me. And last on my list would be the Honda 450RX. Um, it's not a bad bike, it just doesn't really gel with me quite as much. Uh, the motor is super solid, uh, very easy to ride, very similar to the KTM I would say putting that recluse on there and just a smoother character overall. Uh, it was very easy to ride, especially in the off-road frame. But the, uh, one of the big things I really am not a huge fan of with the Honda is it kind of revs quick and it vibrates a lot, especially when you're revving it. And uh, for whatever reason, I just, the Honda motor, while it's good, it's not, it's probably my least favorite motor of the bunch. Um, it's just a little bit tougher to kind of adapt to and wasn't really well liked by myself. Um, move on to the suspension. This by far had the softest suspension, which I think on this chassis isn't a bad thing. Um, this chassis is a rigid, more rigid chassis and you feel a lot. So having a little softer suspension than too stiff of a suspension was like, better on this bike. Um, but still just a little too soft to really f charge and feel comfortable at race speed on this bike. Um, handling, like I said, it turns really well, but it's not the most stable. Um, and like I said, you feel a lot of the ground underneath you and very sensitive chassis as well. So changes can either really hurt the spike or really help the spike. It's not uh, like the Yamaha and the, even the Kawasaki a little bit. They're so, to me, they're so like broad and good everywhere that it's hard to mess it up. Whereas the Honda, with very minor changes could really affect the bike's handling in a negative or positive way. Um, so overall, all these bikes are really good. Uh, the Yamaha came out on top for me, which I really didn't want to put the Yamaha first, but it was just so, so much better in my eyes. Um, I just really adapted to it well and gelled with it well and uh, I know I can go from the desert to Grand Prix to motocross track and feel really really comfortable and with minimal changes so that kind of puts the Yamaha up top for me but uh, yeah all these bikes are really good and uh, I'm glad we got this opportunity because it's very insightful and very interesting to see kind of how these modifications affected these bikes in a negative and positive way and uh, kind of how they stacked up at the end. If you liked what you saw in this video, come check us out over at dirtbiketest.com on the webs. We have bike tests, product tests, a lot of fresh dirt, and you can even support us by clicking through our links. Hopefully we'll see you out in the trail.